Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now he begins to talk about false prophets and he says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them verse 21 is very important not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. I'm going to read verse 21 over again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Verse 22 goes on to say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity are you okay with being a plus one when it comes to the kingdom of God, are you okay? Because a plus one is a person whose name is not on the list. A plus one is a person who can master a lot of things. Well, there's going to be a party one day. I've heard it been called a great feast. Hallelujah. A great feast that many are invited to actually every single person that ever lived is invited to this party but the thing with this party is there's an rsvp which means even though you've been extended an invitation to this party no one will get in without securing the rsvp no plus ones are allowed not one not one because he said in his word that if the righteous scarcely be saved then what's going to happen to the rest and so if the ones who are invited were barely invited they barely secured their RSVP what about everybody else and I couldn't shake this. I couldn't shake it. Um, and I had to move with the spirit of God. I couldn't shake it. And um, like I said, there's going to be a, a great party. And that's the day when Jesus, he's going to receive those who actually know him into his house. And that's going to be the, the, the end of the world as we know it right now. Okay, it's going to be the end of the world as we know it right now. Wherefore, no one will ever be able to be invited again into his house after that point. After that last party, if you don't make it to that party, you will never be able to see Jesus in a good light, at least. In a good light, you won't. And so... This party is important. It's very important. It's very important because it's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. This is not about any tradition. It's not about what you think you know. 
Because what you think you know can win you a whole lot of games in this life. Wonderful works in his name. That would be so sad. Like, I don't ever want to be that person who can say, I have a resume list, long list of preaching, prophesying, doing wonderful works in the name of Jesus, attending church services, saying amen to everything a preacher says. But then when the great shepherd stands before me and I'm standing before him, I hear him say, depart from me, I never knew you. You worker of iniquity? When I thought I was doing his will? It's very important to know where we stand with Jesus. Because all of us are going to exit this place. Some of us sooner than others. But all of us are exiting. And we all only got one place to go. Heaven or hell. And I pray everybody in this room gets to go to heaven. I pray. But guess what? My prayers will never get you into heaven. Because heaven doesn't take plus ones. It doesn't take plus ones. I can't get you there. It says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is something where we have to be so humble before God and say, God, I have the fear of you in me. Not fear where you're like, oh, I'm running away from God. God is coming. But fear where you reverence him. To say, Lord, am I pleasing you today? Lord, am I doing your work today? Lord, did I cop an attitude with folk today? If I did, I repent. I'm talking about that nitty gritty worship. See, some of y'all don't know what that is. That nitty gritty worship where you worship God so deep in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. Where you say that I know I had this attitude for 20 years. But God, today I submit it to you and ask you, am I pleasing you with how I spoke to so and so today? Yes. All right. Speak it, God. Did I pray the way you called me to today? Where you lay down what you think is Christianity and you trade it for what God said in his word, for what Jesus said, for what he's asking. That nitty gritty worship where when one person is doing one thing. And it's justified by God. Another person is doing something different. It's justified by God. But when God is asking you to do something different, all of them, and you're just like, well, I'll just do what they're doing. I just, no, 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 no. That nitty gritty worship where it's, I'm doing what God is telling me. It's not about what they're doing. They're do if I can leave you with this, is I would encourage you to ask God, what do you want me to be doing? How do you want me to worship you? How do you want me to pray? That's one of my things. I like to pray how God wants me to pray. Because people, people, people will tell you to do all types of things. You need to do this at 3 o'clock. And, and then you need to make sure the hand is switched this way. And when you do this, face the east. And then like all types of stuff. Here, here's a, here's a, a, a strong key. You do what you think should be done. And you do... What tradition may tell you to do or what the world is doing, you don't have a guaranteed spot in the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. He said, what did he say? But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. There's one grand will, love God and to love people. But in that grand big will, there's sub wills for each and every one of us. And we have to know what that is. Hallelujah. We have to because, the, it, it, I mean, this is, this is heaven or hell at stake. I know some people, they might not be able to grasp it. They don't know what eternity really, none of us have actually experienced eternity. So some people can't grasp the fact that that is never ending because they've never seen anything that actually has no end. Because everything in this life has an end, even if it's really long. 
And so some people cannot grasp the thought of there being somewhere that we will be participating in that will never end. Wow. Jesus. And there is that place for all of us, whether you're in hell or whether you're in heaven. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you guys. And why do I want to pray? Because this message was too heavy on my heart to not pray. Because um, he's, he's faithful, Amen. but he's just. Yes. He's faithful, but he's just. Mm. So mm. I'm going to pray that our hearts are pure. Amen. That our lives are dedicated and saturated to the king. I'm going to pray that each and every person have a will to serve God and to love God with all their heart, their mind, their soul, their spirit. Thank you, God. So I just ask that you come into agreement and you bow your heads and just be real and sincere with God. If you're going to be stuck on all of that false religion and tradition and my church taught me this, my church taught me that, listen. This, this, this is not what I'm here for. I'm just trying to help you be right. So let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you and I just honor you. You are good. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And we thank you that it endures forever. We thank you that your mercy is present right now to even bring a word, God. Lord, I ask that you search our hearts Your word says that you search the reins, the hearts. You search everything, God. So, Lord, as the psalmist prayed, God, search us and know us. Try us and know our thoughts, God. And see if there be any wicked thing in us, God. And if there is, God, take it away, Lord. Hallelujah. Take it away, God. Every selfish motive, everything that we justify, God, in and of ourselves, God. The way we've done things, the way we've loved people that wasn't satisfying to you, God. The way we've treated people that wasn't satisfied to you, God. Any selfish things that we do, God, that we think are okay, God. The way we walk in this life, God. The things we do, God. Change it, God, if it is not pleasing to you, God. Lord, I ask that you humble us, God. Humble us, God, before you, Jesus, that we will be so, so meek in your presence, God, that we will be teachable, God, that if you tell us, no, you have to do this different or you have to think differently, walk differently, Lord God, that we will do it, God. Let us be before you, God, like a child, God, like those sons and daughters, God, that you want us to, God. You said, blessed are the meek, for they inherit the earth, God. We want to walk as those people who inherit the earth for your kingdom. We want to be pure in heart, God, for we know that it is the pure in heart, God, who will see you, God. And we want to see you, God, not just move in this life. We don't want to see you just move in this life, but we want to see you in the next life to come, God. So if there's any barriers, God, within any one of us, God, anything that is disgusting to you, God, Lord, clean us up and purify us because we know you're holy. And so we want to be holy, sanctified and set apart, God, just for you, Lord God. And so, Lord, I ask God, and you can repeat this along with me, guys, that you forgive us for all of our sins, God, known and unknown, Lord Jesus, God, that if we've done anything, God, God, that was displeasing to you, God. We say, Lord, we we just put it at your feet, God, and ask that you forgive us and wipe our slate clean, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Create in us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us, God. Let your Holy Spirit be dwelling in us, God, and leading and guiding us, God. Lord, we make the best effort that we can to, to yield to your Holy Spirit, God, in the way that you desire us to, God. Lord, if people don't understand how to follow you, how to yield, Lord God, I ask that you give clear direction as to what that is. I ask that each and every person begins to seek you, God, that as they seek you, Lord God, they will know, God, hallelujah, what you are requiring, God. For you promised us in your word, God, that if we seek you, we will find you, God. 
if we seek you with all of our hearts, oh God. And so I thank you, God. And Lord, I ask that you protect every person in this place, God. And Lord, I don't have the authority, God, to send anyone to heaven, God, or to send anyone to hell, God, that is yours and yours alone, God. And so, Lord, with my prayer, I just pray that you soften the hearts of each and every person, God, that they may receive what you have spoken to them and that they will receive you, God. Hallelujah, God. Let your will be done, God. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For as you are calling your children, God, in this hour, each and every person in this room, God, as you are calling them, God, let everyone answer because you said he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so I thank you, God, that you are calling let your people hear so I thank you God I thank you God and for the Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord he shall be saved hallelujah whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved first call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved and then follow him after. Be purified, hallelujah. Purified, hallelujah. Purify us, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, Lord, we surrender, God. We surrender all of us, God. Lord, we're not going to be, God, like those people who thought they knew you and didn't know you, God. We surrender us, God. Lord, change our minds, God. Oh, Lord, I know nothing in your presence. Hey, Baba, Shekhar, I say. Lord, we know nothing in your presence except what you reveal to us, God. So reveal to those who truly, God, who truly want to know what you are saying speaking in this hour who truly want to walk with you oh god let us let us know no god you lord and the power of your resurrection and i must say help us god to know hallelujah thank you lord for loving us and for loving everyone in this room and i thank you god that you have a spot in your kingdom at your party for those who want to RSVP and I thank you God and I seal this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth he's a good God he's a good God he's a good God he's a good God he's a holy God he's holy he's holy he is holy and we cannot stand unhumble in his presence. Oh, help us, God. Every way, God. Every way of ours, God. That is clothed in pride, God. Tear it down in the name of Jesus. Tear it down in the name of Jesus. We want to be right with you, God. Righteous, God. Righteous, God. Righteous God. Righteous God. Righteous God. Make us righteous. Make us new rem renew our minds. That you will say you know us. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Continue to worship God. And hey there, don't go anywhere. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified about future episodes.